Our van is maxed out. We are doing two pools and one service call. One above ground, one underground. Yeah, here it is. First service call, customer was plugging in a portable heater and that's the results. We just changed the outlet really easy, but uh, yeah, they probably shouldn't put their portable heater on outlets anymore. They said it was a loose connection, might have been, but I think they, uh, I think they plugged into something too powerful for the uh, circuit. I took it out, Frankie put it in. It's the hardest job of the day. All right guys, so I'm gonna go over what we did with this above ground pool first. This was the first job that we actually took care of. This we did from start to finish in a few hours. We started digging. The customer initially started digging, but the depth was definitely not deep enough. Code wants us to do at least 18 inches for this 120 volt line that we're gonna bring for an outlet for the pool pump and stuff like that. So we dug it out a little bit more and I'm basically going to drill into this shed here because they have a sub panel and I'm gonna tap in two outlets to that sub panel. One of them, like I said, is gonna be for the pool outlet and then the other one is gonna be for a convenience outlet right next to my LB. So I'm gonna drill through two layers of this shit and then I'm gonna add my LB. It was really hot this day, so we picked up some drinks and put them in the cooler as well as our sandwiches because shit gets hot, especially when you're doing pools and digging outside in the heat. It's only going to get hotter. This was the first job, so it was only like 9 a.m., I believe, so it wasn't too hot yet, but I knew it was coming. So after I did that, I went back, set everything up to run the existing pipe. And then my brother, while I was doing this, continued to dig, and he also put in the post for the outlet as well as everything else. So I know you guys don't like when I use this blue glue, but it was supposed to rain and we here at my company do everything rain or shine. So this is the best glue to use for wet conditions also, just in case it does happen to you. And it is a little bit more of a mess, but there's a way to make it not messy. Um, it's important to just do a light layer around and then hold it upside down so it doesn't drip all down the pipe but i don't always use this i usually use the clear pvc glue but this is also 100 percent code compliant as well and i use if it might possibly rain so like i said my brother is still hooking up the post there and i am running all of the conduit this only took like 30 minutes max Once I made it all the way to the post, I dropped my PVC in the ground and I started to cover all of this up. Alright, so this is how I bond my pool. Um, basically how it works is you need number 8 solid copper to, ground, to bond the entire pool. And it has to be at least 18 to 24 inches from the pool's edge and 4 to 6 inches below grade level. So basically what I do is I kick up all the sand that the customer put around. And then Frankie takes uh, the number eight ground wire and walks it over like that. And then I follow behind him and cover everything up. Like I said, code requirement says four to six inches below grade level. So that's what we did. This is not really too hard. And the way that I did it made it a little bit easier with the uh, pick. <laughs> Now we also have to bond all of the equipment. Every piece of equipment that comes with a pool has a bonding screw on it, so it's important to get the pump as well as the filter up above um, and basically every single piece of equipment that could possibly go with the pool. If there's a heater, you also have to bond the heater. We drilled a small hole into that to actually bond the pool itself. And then here I am running the 120 volt outlet for this outside pump. And then my brother is using the Milwaukee electronic fish tape to push it through. This thing has been nothing but a help for us and it goes through so quickly. So I'm just going to attach my THHN and like I said, this is 120 volts. This is just standard 12 wire. We're doing a white, a black, and a green. Nothing in this pool is rated for 220, so we don't need to worry about anything like that. We're just doing a standard outlet and that's going to hook up the pool 
timer as well as the pool pump and everything else so i didn't have the nice piece of pipe that i usually use for this so i had to improvise a little bit and um, put a screwdriver under just the ground and then a pipe for the black and the white usually i have a pipe long enough but i just didn't bring it i didn't even think about it honestly but this worked just fine While I was installing this outlet, my brother was installing the one that's going to be near the LB for the shed. The customer wanted a convenience outlet out there to plug in like a radio and whatever else he needed. And I needed to basically get power to all the equipment. Both outlets were waterproof GFIs and they had in use bubble covers and bell boxes to keep everything watertight. And then the pool panel is a Hayward like time clock system. So this is what we mounted to here. Once we finished everything outside, we converted to Romex inside and basically ran two new home runs to the panel from the LB and from that convenience outlet we did over the studs that way we didn't have to drill holes in this customers um, two by fours it was just a little bit easier that way and the previous electrician did the same thing and it wasn't too far of a run so we just ran it from one end to the other My brother stapled everything back while I terminated these wires in the panel. Super easy, like I said, just two 120 volt circuits for GFIs. This is what the panel looked like on the outside. I set the timer and I didn't turn on the chlorine thing yet because I don't do that, the pool guy does that. I just hooked all this up and yeah, that's it. So that's job one completed. Then halfway through the job, we had to drive about 45 minutes away and head to the finishing of the underground pool that we were doing. We did this one other day before and basically we're just finishing the runs and doing all of the small stuff that needed to get done with this. Um, but yeah, this is the same place I also ran blue PVC pipe and that was because I wanted to make sure if it got rained on we were completely fine and we could still do our job. And yeah, so I'm basically just terminating everything in this pool panel. This pool panel is a little bit different. It has two timers as well as um, basically it's almost a whole sub panel. It has a bunch of breakers and stuff. So I had to run 30 amp wire from the original panel into this junction box and then from the junction box i ran more wire into that pool panel here we're using the milwaukee electronic fish fish tape again and it is making this run super easy we had a lot of 90s so we wanted to make sure that this went through pretty smooth but it did so while i was doing this my brother was making up the light that's in the pool and fixing all that stuff and then i was just terminating this and making up the panel
You think that's an easy job? I made sure I labeled everything and this is what it turned out like in total. I feel like it came out really good. The heater is bonded, the pool pump is bonded, everything is bonded, every piece of equipment, and this is the whole pool. It looks really good actually. So yeah. Thanks for coming along this long ass 12 hour job with us. And I'm just glad to be done. It was freaking boiling hot. And that right there is for the lights. It connects to the Bluetooth. I don't know how it works, but Pentair came out with this cool like dial thing. So we installed that for her and that's it.